Hey guys, today we are working on the 2015 Ram 1500. We're going to be replacing the front brakes as well as the driver's side wheel hub assembly. So first thing first, what you want to do is get your 7-8 socket, deep well, half inch drive. We have a breaker ball. We're going to stick it on each lug nut before we lift the wheel and break those bad boys loose. So that way, um, once you lift the vehicle, you don't have to struggle with getting the lugs or the lug nuts off of the wheel. So next thing you want to do once you've done that is come around to the front of the vehicle. We go to the cross member on the front of the frame. We have our jack in a position up underneath there. We use two wooden blocks as not to damage any kind of metal uh, substance whatsoever. So there you have it on the frame, and we are going to get ready to lift up the vehicle. So as we're lifting the vehicle, you might notice this wheel kick out a little bit right here on the driver's side as we lift up on it. Right. Now we have that up high enough. You just you don't want it way up in the air, just enough to spin the tire around so that you can um slide the, the tire off of the vehicle easily without applying a whole lot of weight onto your body. So next we're gonna get our half inch drive impact gun. It's electric, and we're going to remove each one of these lug nuts. You can use a half inch ratchet if that's all you have. Um, I'm using the impact because I have one and it's quicker. All right, all right those are replaced. So now what you want to do is just bump it either with your foot or with your hand just a little bit like so to get it off of there so next we're going to grab it and lift the tire off of the vehicle alright next thing we're going to do folks is remove this caliper right here and the caliper bracket right there and we're going to go ahead and replace the brake pads on this side as well so stay tuned all right guys so the next thing you want to do is get your 13 millimeter socket and a 3 8 ratchet and i'm showing you how to do it with a ratchet as well as with a uh, electric ratchet wrench what i'm doing is removing the caliper bolts that goes to the caliper bushings and we're going to put some um some uh caliper grease on there when we get done and reinstall it but that was removing it with the 3 8 uh ratchet so now i'm going to use the electric one just to show you a little bit quicker So as you can see, I don't know if you noticed, but it's just spinning right here. On the back of that nut. So what we're gonna do is try the 17 and an 18 on there, but it's not fitting because it has a round collar right here on that nut. So I'm gonna take a set of vice grips and I'm gonna stick the vice grips on that nut. To jam it up and keep it from spinning. Get 
tighten. You want to make sure that you don't stick your pliers on that rubber. That's to damage it. So now we have that lock. Completely off of there, and it is removed. So, quick tip: next we're going to replace our vice grips. Take those off, set them to the side. I'm going to take a flat blade screwdriver now, and I'm going to stick it under one of the ears on the caliper and pop it up. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side, and I'm going to do it in the middle. I'm just going to keep doing that until I get the caliper off. But if for some reason yours is stuck, you can take and stick your screwdriver right here through this hole and press on that caliper bushing and loosen that bad boy. Just apply a little bit of pressure through this hole right here. Make sure you don't damage the boots. And um, just keep going with it till you get it off there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is stick my screwdriver through the top, pry off of the caliper a little bit. I'm gonna go back down to the bottom Wiggle it back and forth. Do the same thing. Caliper. I'm gonna sit it up here on that upper control arm, just looking to make sure that we did not pinch or damage our brake hose in any way, right here. So, next thing we're gonna do is come back here and we're gonna take these caliper bolts off right here on the caliper bracket. So, stay tuned for that right there. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take off our brake pads. Go look at the brake pads. They're still in pretty good condition, but we're still going to replace those. The front pad had these two clips on them right here. Back pad, it looks pretty good, but we're going to replace it. Might as well because we're doing this job, breaking this wheel completely down. So might as well go ahead and go all the way. What we want to do to get that caliper bracket off, we can do it in the position that it currently is. But to make it just a little bit easier, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn the steering wheel to the watch the driver's side, which will kick that out, as you can see. And it allowed me just a little bit more room, a little bit more leniency with breaking these bolts loose. And I forgot to mention, but the size socket that I'm using is a 13 16 socket, half inch drive on a half inch ratchet. All right, got those loosened. bottom bolt right there Let's sit it to the side here's the top bolt
right is the top bolt. And there's the bracket right here. Still in good shape. Not a lot of brake dust on it. I'm gonna set that to the side. We're still gonna clean that up just a hair before we um, take that bad boy off. So next what we wanna do is apply a little bit of penetrate fluid right here. on that rotor, center that hook to loosen that thing up off of there. Our uh, wheel hub is completely damaged on here, so other than these clips locking it on there, which, I mean, you can take your flat blade screwdriver and pick these bad boys off and try to reuse them, but I don't recommend doing that. I'm just going to take a sledgehammer, a dead blow hammer, and tap on the back of it to remove it. All right, so all I'm doing now is I use my flat blade screwdriver as well as some uh, needle nose pliers to remove these circle clips off of the wheel studs. tricky get these bad boys off I'm just going to bend it because I don't plan on reusing it and I'm just going to slide it off that way alright so we got the clips off next we're going to tap on the rotor on the back side Alright guys, so what we're doing now is I have the 18 millimeter socket, short socket, and a 3 8 ratchet, and I'm taking the bolts out of the back of the uh, wheel hook. It appears to be stuck on the rotor, and so, um... Just gonna take the club off, get the rotor still attached, smack it off that way with a sledgehammer. If your bolts are a little bit stubborn they come off of that folks you may want to spray a little bit of penetrating fluid on there mine wasn't that bad I used 18 millimeter short half inch dry socket first and a breaker ball to break it loose and now I'm using the 18 millimeter short socket and 3 8 ratchet to break it on off of there. Alright, so one 
one thing I forgot to do. And I hope you don't. Disconnect. Let me set this hook back in there. Need to disconnect this uh, wheel speed sensor. Do now, folks, that I got the hub off. It's just beat it. I'm beating it and knocking it loose off of my rotor. As you can see, it's been loosening itself off of my rotor. Whereas before it was stuck. So now I can just simply take that bad boy off. You may not have to do that, but just so if you do happen to have to do that, beat it right here on the center of your wheel hub, not your rotor. You don't want to damage the rotor. I'm reusing my rotor. So that's why I beat the center of the hub. So next thing you want to do is get your brand new part. You want to do a comparison, both five lugs, center hub looks exactly the same. I'm take this paper out, I'll flip this one over, go look at it, they're both exactly identical, and you can see on my old one, see that gap in there, that bearing was completely worn out. You hear it? That grinding. So next, I'm going to look at my sensor. This sensor is a two-prone sensor, exactly like my old one. So just in case you get one like I did that comes with a brand new sensor, you want to compare everything and make sure it's exactly the same before you go and try to install it and get this one all dirtied up. Um, if your sensor is different, you can take this old one off with this bolt right here, clean it up with some a wire brush and a brake clean, and reuse it. I might take that sensor off just to have a spare, but I don't know. I may not. So next, we're going to clean up this knuckle. See that rust and debris right there? We're going to clean that up. And then we're going to uh, install the new hub and move that up just a little bit, not a lot. Stay tuned for that. All I'm doing here first is I'm spraying this with some brake clean to get the debris off of that. And so I can see what I'm working with. Next, I'm taking my wire brush and I'm just easily gingerly cleaning this to get the grease and the debris off of there, road grime, so that the new one can install very, very easily on there. You don't want to use sandpaper on this, just a wire brush. I mean, if yours is severely damaged, your knuckle severely damaged, you may want to get some sandpaper very gingerly go over it but not nothing too abrasive where you're changing the diameter of the knuckle and the uh, wheel hook to where they don't fit and they properly and they flop around and you can end up causing more damage to your vehicle Spray that again with the brake clean. Okay. Let that dry real quick. What I'm using now is copper anti seize right here. And I'm just putting it on the inside of my knuckle, very thin, to where the knuckle allows the new wheel hook to slide on very easily with no problem 
I'm going to take the sensor and I'm going to weave it through the backing plate like so. So this is essentially what you want to do. You stick the sensor through there. There's a slot made for it. And then line this up on the backing plate. And then stick the hub. On the vehicle. And line those holes up. From the back. So you have that one. Try to go for another one. Just taking the bolts, sticking them through the back of the knuckle. And lining up these bolt holes through the plate and into the new hub. And we're starting them hand tight. Make sure that we don't have anything cross threaded before we go to tightening it, everything up with our ratchets. So now we're down to the third one and last one. Again, sticking it through the back. We're going to line that shield so what I'm doing now is get my torque wrench click tight I'm loosening this wheel on the bottom and then I'm going to spin it to the left, counterclockwise, down to about 85 foot-pounds. I'm going to tighten this back down. Then I'm going to get my 18 socket, put it on there, and tighten these bad boys up. One click, we're gonna go for another one. All right, do the same thing on this one. Right, that was one click, we're gonna go for another one. All right, and this third one. Oh, it was one click. Go for another one. There we go, so now I'm going to fasten the sensor on up and slide it back on there, 
back in there. And we're gonna slide this up. You heard it snap and lock it into place. It fastens right here. See these two holes? That's where it goes. Right there like so. And this one, I believe goes right here. In that hole. So now, we got our hub on. It's quiet. Smooth as a button. Next, we want to get our rotor and install it. So I'm just going to spray the rotor with some brake clean. I'm wiping it down to get the oil and debris off of it. Front and back. Next, I'm going to install it. Like so. If you want to reuse those little circle clips, you can. If yours aren't damaged, too bad. What that does is it'll hold it in place while you do the rest of what you need to do. Spray down our caliper bracket, brake cleaner, Put to install that in place, take our bolt, sticking it in the top hole, just hand tightening it. I'm do the same thing with the back bolt. Just taking the bolt, sticking it in the bottom. Just getting it started hand tight. Next, I'm going to take my torque wrench, click tight, half inch drive. I'm going to torque both of these bad boys down. Alright, so all I'm doing now is torquing these caliber bracket bolts down. For two, I'm going to do the top the same way. That's mm. one click, ah, two clicks. All right, guys. Next, we're going to take our wire brush, mark that dust off of that thing, clean it up. We'll spray it down with brake cleaner again. Brake pads, our new brake pads, not the old ones. Take your brake pads, look at them, 
Make sure they're exactly the same, which they are. Same size, same length. Only thing is, we're going to take these clips off. The old ones. And put them on the new ones. I'm just taking these clips off. And I'm reusing them. On my new pads. So next, you want to take your brake pad. Like so. You can see that part of the bracket and that part of the bracket. You want to take the pad and insert it into that position. Same thing at the top. And there you have it. That's how you install the pad. And we're going to do the same thing at the back. So now guys, so I have my brake caliper tool to press in the brake caliper. And I'm just winding it clockwise to push that caliper piston back in so that it'll fit on that thick, beautiful new brake pad. And I'm using one of the old brake pads to um, press that in. You can, you can use a piece of flat bar or whatever piece of flat metal, just so long as it's flat, you know, and um, just stick it in here like so over the piston and then begin to twist your brake tool for the pressing in the brake pad onto the caliper. Right, so now we got that done. We can install the back pad the same way we did the front. Last thing you want to do is take your wire brush and we're cleaning up all that brake dust off of the caliper before we install it. Then we're going to take our brake cleaner. Clean it down real good. Let that dry a little bit. Then we're going to install the caliper into its position. All right, so we got it in position. Next, we want to take our bolts, line the holes up. First, we want to make sure that that line is in the proper direction and not kinked up. through now and we're tightening down these 13 millimeter caliper bolts on the caliper remember that we had trouble with the top so we stuck the vice grips on it and tighten it down and that's what we're doing here on the bottom same thing tightening it down with the vice grips Gonna take the 13 millimeter socket off the electric wrench, put it on the ratchet, snug it down with it by hand. There we go. Do the same thing on the bottom. There we go. All right, guys, we're going to take the brake cleaner, spray it off again. And there you have it. Next thing is put the wheel on, and you're good to go. And that's our video on how to install, how to replace a front driver or passenger side wheel hub assembly and front brakes.
on a Ram 1500 with a Hemi 5.7. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you find this repair video helpful. And all the other repair videos that we have in stock on YouTube. Until next time, please like, share, and subscribe with your friends. Peace.